Good afternoon everyone, it's uh, September the 4th, about 5 o'clock in the evening, knocking at the door of 21 degrees C, lovely day, we're on the lightweight Brompton P line, this is a video that's been 5 months in the making, actually we're on Weybridge Road in Mansfield, Anyway, let's all have a little pedal along and uh, it's taken me five, I've had about five months and it's taken me until now to do a, a review. Um, bear with me. It's taken me five months to do well it's taken me four months to do a one month review because it's it's been a strange acquisition it's done it's done strange things we're just down in uh just down in mansfield that's water meadows swimming complex we're going to go into Titchfield Park, which I probably missed. And I can get in this way. So bear with me, guys. Yeah. So, it, it's like a, a P line effect. I'll just get past the. Oh, yes, yeah, some flies about. Just get past the kids because they'll all want to join in. So just bear with me. You've been with me to the to this park before. One of the lovely parks in Mansfield. We're going to we're gonna get parked up and then we'll We'll talk Brompton. <clears throat> Great. What can I say about it? Can I just clip you here a minute? Just bear with me. I've got a clipping thing on the GoPro. So I clipped it to a bench. Right, so you saw me pick it up in London, from Covent Garden, you saw my first little sort of review in Nottingham, and you heard me talk about, I bought a lightweight Brompton, why on earth would I bolt more bits onto it? So we'll do a list, we'll run down of what's been bolted on. Firstly, the inner tubes, the rear inner tube, I've had to blow the tyre up every other day since I've had the bike and uh, I got fed up with it so I took the tube out, I've put a swell bead tube in, no issues now, I blew the original inner tube right up and it had got a little pinhole and it was a little pinhole. So uh, looks like a manufacturing fault. Also, I had to. I also had to reseat the rim tape. <clears throat> it was going up the, the side of the wheel. Anyway, I I, I enjoyed the saddle <clears throat> in the most part, up to about 
15 miles and then it wasn't so good so I went Brooks B17 that's my trusted touring bike saddle bit like a glove you know that you all know about Brooks horrendous thing when you buy them new and one day you realized you don't know it's there so that's the Brooks and, the, and there must be two or three times the weight of the saddle that came on the bike which I'll probably go back to for the winter purely because of the durability of its weatherproofing but for now got the Brooks on super comfortable that's the monkey cage bottle I'm still persevering with the monkey cage purely because it costs so much money the grips the handlebar grips I found the uh, uncomfortable very hard but again these are standard uh, sea lion grips and again they um, the three times a weight I think you'll have seen I fitted these strong light 44 tooth chain ring mm -hmm. this little bit that they call the chain keep has three holes which are threaded so you've got three positions and I guess that's 44 50 whatever it came on and 56 don't know for sure what else did I bolt on if you can see in there the first gear is now a 19 tooth instead of 18 tooth I may go 20 even one tooth difference has made one tooth has, has made a difference to the rideability of, of the bike and then secondly thirdly fourthly fifthly whatever i bought it without the rack because i wanted a lightweight super light brompton the reality was without a rack it's um i couldn't cope I couldn't cope with the instability so Brompton made the made the rear rack <coughs> made the rear rack available um, probably five weeks ago. 126 pounds. It was I would think I only use SJS St James Street Cycles or Brilliant Bikes if I don't order from Brompton Direct. It's made a fantastic difference. One vast, it came with a mud guard as well. Let's show you. Let's get it down. So there's the, that's the rear rack. Run the P-line without the rack is, is comes out of the factory. The reflector, there's a bizarre plastic thing mounted on there which I didn't like anyway but look at this super duper slim and trim reflector Brompton logo on the rack it came with the little wheels it came with the rack specific specific, bleh, specific mud guard so I've not bolted much on I do want to go for I do want to go for Brompton Superlight pedals which they have on the on the T-line when they're available <coughs> um, the other thing where does it fit in to the Brompton lineup and this is why it's taken me four months to do essentially my one month review because I firmly made my mind up where it fitted in after a month um, but I wasn't I, I didn't actually I didn't believe where it fitted in I didn't believe where it was so I've kept going it's been on a few a few trips a few tours I took it around the um, Apple and Ale 
route in Whiz Beach, around Whiz Beach, it's been a bit around Norfolk, it's been on the Transpennine Trail, Five Bits Trails, Hardcore Rough Services, Tarmac, and uh, it, it, does, it isn't a niche, it doesn't fit into a niche whatsoever. What it's done is, it's made, you've seen the other Bromptons, you've got a video of the other Bromptons, it's actually made all of them redundant. I have ridden a couple of the others purely because guilt made me get on and ride them. It's, it really has made all the others redundant. And I think as, as Brompton go and as Brompton owners go and Brompton riders what they need out of the Brompton I think it's made any hub gear Brompton redundant it is it's three times the bike of a six speed Brompton it's the, the other thing about where it fits into the lineup you've seen what I've got, I've got the B75 with the Kuzak bars, I've got the A line which is brand new but fitted with folding, folding mud guard folding pedals, mud guards. I've got the six speeds. One is an S with Kuzak bars. One's an M6R, which is essentially was my touring bike. Dynamo lights. Um, twice twice the weight of this, so it seems twice the weight or more of this. Um, <clears throat> and I've got the Cloud Blue M6E. C line thing. The, the closest in hierarchy of the Bromptons, this is top dog, without any shadow of a doubt. And this is why it's taken me so long to make the video. I know I'm rambling on, but it is, it is a game changer. Um, the next best. The next brilliant value for money is the A-Line and I really, for me, this is pers for my personal use, my choice and I don't ride fast, I do go up some steep hills, I ride rough trails, I use it for hotels, this goes on the bus, it's brilliant for great taking on the bus and on the train. Um, the six speeds go out oh, I've got a, a lady saddle on one of the six speeds so when I'm out with a friend she grabs that and I'll take the Lagoon Blue one which is my all time favourite coolest sexiest looking Brompton I've ever owned um, if I'm out on my own I do like riding the, the B75 um, and that's probably because everybody hated it when it came out and if everybody hates it then I know they're wrong <clears throat> it's like these tyres on these things everybody hates them and they all have continentals I firmly believe that 90% of them are talking proverbial um, but the A line is, is the next best bike and, and the other line ups I know I've adjusted the gearing on the A line I've just the gearing on the B75 um, because of the hills. I only tour, I only cruise at 8, 9, 10 miles an hour. Everything, I've, they, all, they all do that. But I can get up the hills. So, in the lineup, it's Top Dog. It's been Top Dog ever since I've had it. I've pinched myself. But it isn't. It's not. It's not exciting. It's, I think it's because it's black as well, I don't like black, I don't like black bikes, and I like grey even less. And it's like, you can have it in finished black or grey primer, but that's only my opinion again. Anyway, I rambled on, um, I, just, I just don't know where to go with you with it because I, I, I'm 
it's outstanding. It's outstanding. And that isn't cock and bull. That isn't publicity. It's uh well the two thousand now put the rack on two thousand three hundred quid ish. Worth every single last penny. And uh like I say, it's three times the bike. The M6R with dynamo lights is three times the bike. Rideability. Um, I mean the lightness. The lightness is is brilliant. Getting on and off the bus, carrying on the pronto bus. No, no changing of hands. No thinking. Oh, what could you do with this? Putting this down. The only the only issue I had was the stability when it's folded, and its lack of ability to stay up. I could never work out how to roll it along with this half down seat post. Um, that's probably something they should introduce on the steel bikes, on the hub gear bikes, because the reality is you, you've got an S bag in one hand, a T bag in one hand, your bike in the other, and you balance as you're walking along. So it's no hardship. That's me rambled on, more than I expected. If you still watch it, I can't take you ride in the park again, there's too many kids about. But if you've any doubt about the suitability for a, of a, of a P line in your life, I'm sure it will fit. Absolutely sure it's going to fit. Anyway, that's me rambled enough. Let's have a look, guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. If you're still listening, buy yourself an ice cream. And I'll give you the money when I see you. So once again, thank you very much. And I will leave you a little view of the park here in Mansfield.